welcome to the 8 p.m. news on Canal de English with me, Annette Fethi Sume. We begin with our top stories for tonight. Bad Tuesday for some traders of the Etudi market in Yawundi as fire consumed their shops. The future of institutions training nurses, midwives, and health technicians in Cameroon come under scrutiny as the 21st session of the board of directors of these institutions opened today. And out of the country, the Republic of Zimbabwe today celebrated its 37th independence anniversary. The developments of this story and more will be yours right ahead. Well, we start with this bad news. An eight-year-old girl is presently undergoing checkup after she was raped by a man in his 50s. The man whose name our reporters got as Peter is said to have been entertaining sexual relationship with this child for over two months now. Tabby Clarkson relates the sad event. Wonders they say shall never end. The source neighborhood in Yaoundé is now the talk of the day, with latest in town being the rape of young Vanessa. The primary school eight years old girl has since February 2017 been entertaining a forceful sexual relationship with the 50 years old Peter. Peter, who is believed to be of Nigerian nationality, according to eyewitnesses' reports, had as strategy the use of bonbon or again sweets. Apart from the sweets used to attract the baby girl, Peter also during his scandalous operation used to make use of a knife. The knife is to intimidate Vanessa that he will kill her if she dares inform whosoever. As the saying goes, 99 days for a thief, and one day for the owner, Peter was finally arrested this Monday, April 17, thanks to the landlady of his house who had a child screaming and wanted to verify what was happening just for her to discover, to her greatest surprise, that the 50 years old Peter was on the 8 years old Vanessa. She then alerted the population, despite efforts on the part of Peter, and two of his brothers for the landlady to arrange the matter amicably. Informed, the elements of the National Gendarmerie came into play. Peter is arrested and presently under custody are waiting to dance to the wicked tune, the tune of justice. While we continue on the same line where a recent report from the NGO, Association La Colombe has indicated that 475 children are raped every year in Cameroon with most of the victims aged between 14 and below. Nti Morin took interest in this. Rape is a growing social offense in societies. According to l'Association Le Colomb, in Cameroon, 475 children are reported to be raped yearly, affecting mostly children from 14 and below. Other reports show that at least 109 girls got pregnant after being raped. It is a case of 14-year-old Mariama raped by her own father. She is currently pregnant and carrying her own sister. She recounts her story in tears. I was raped at the age of 10. I was in primary school then. My father threatened me. He said if I talk, he will beat me. Darol, 13, is no more. She died from pain and shock after her body could not withstand the brutal sexual harassment. She was defied and her organs destroyed by the rapist. Darol is among thousands of children in Cameroon thousands of children suffering from rape in Cameroon. While some prefer to die in silence, others have become skeptical of their immediate environment. Families no longer trust each other. It has become more critical that people are scared to see their children in their neighbors' houses. 
The green phenomenon is described as a poison for children who in fear of the unknown prefer not to denounce the rapist. Carol Kanwe is a psychiatric. She says in most cases a victim dies in silence. She is ashamed of herself and knows if she speaks out, even her own family members will not believe her. La Colombe is an association that is out to sensitize people on the growing social ill. This growing social ill has pushed l'association La Colombe to sensitize people, the intent to denounce and make cases of rape known. Well, a ravaging fire consumed part of the Etuzi market early today. Shops were burnt before firefighters could arrive the scene. The cause of the fire is still to be determined, as Beatrice Ngamo tells us. AM. Confusing situation at the Yaoundé Etuzi market between the flames that destroys the goods, the traders struggling to save what they could, and firefighters trying to bring the fire under control. This Tuesday, the violent fires came to destroy the quietness of traders of this market where anything could happen at any time. The first damage is that of material. Over three stores, more than 150 suitcases containing cell phones for traders who kiosk outside the shop. So to most of the goods, so to the others, filled with goods of traders who come and keep for the night. The, the disturbed traders expressing their devastation and shock. This lady, for example, her husband is the owner of the shop, saying if the intervention was timely, her store would still be safe. The same anger by the population who are surprised that their shops, just a stone throw to the base of the firefighter squad, could be consumed like this. The fireman says they arrive when they are called. Captain Vale Besala, commander of the 101 Fire Company at HUD, says they arrived after receiving the call, and at times the population do not allow them easy access to do their jobs. These shops, it should be noted, are constructed opposite the main market in provisionary building material, and all the traders are previewed to exercise business in this building, the new market, which is still under construction five years later. Dreams shattered, future bleak, hope of these many youths put to ashes. Well, the future of 97 training schools for nurses, midwives and health technicians in Cameroon is presently under scan. The 21st session of the board of directors of these institutions was opened today in Yawunde by the Minister of Public Health. For three days, they will evaluate training, look at challenges and come up with proposals that will help promote quality health delivery and services in Cameroon. This report. Quality health delivery and services is what is expected from nurses, midwives and health technicians after training. It is to ensure that these over 97 training schools for nurses, midwives and health technicians here in Cameroon stick to and attain these objectives that the actors of the sector are in conflict in Yaoundé. To appreciate the quality of training, we have to note the weaknesses uh, in the different schools. We will see what we have to do concerning schools situated in the southwest and northwest regions. The southwest region has nine training schools and five examination centers. The anglophone crisis, the challenge is many. Our teachers, they receive threats. So we are operating in an environment of fear. Even the students also were threatened. And it goes even further to, uh, to, to, to a level whereby some uh, schools' uh, properties were destroyed. The fact that the students are not coming in, some are not even, most of them have not paid their fees, so the schools are going through serious financial crisis. The situation which is worsened, especially with the blockage, the internet connection in the south is It has affected the school enormously in the aspect of research. The teachers, to build up your note, you need to go online. The students, to carry on with their research work, they need to go online. So it is a major problem. Proposals include... We are actually crying that if they can see how to reinstate uh, that particular uh, facility because it's, it's the backbone of academic anywhere in the world. So if we, are, we are just pleading that if the ministry can think of uh, uh, see how to 
to prolong the academic year for us there so that we'll see how to catch up. The Southwest Regional Delegate as President of Jury of the Training Schools, Pernesis, and others are part of the 21st session of the Board of Directors of Training Schools for Nurses, Midwives and Health Technicians that opened this April 18 to run for three days. In economic news, small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon want to upgrade their level so as to improve productivity. And for them to succeed, they have been told to reorient their companies. Crystal Catala sat through a meeting where businessmen were schooled on how to increase productivity. Small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon have to improve on their quality, competitivity, and productivity. For this to be effective, seven principles, among which the reorientation of the structure of the company and the organization of work in the enterprise must be taken into consideration. Thirteen consultants were assigned to upgrade the standards of some 13 enterprises selected in Douala and Yaoundé using the 5S Kaizen project from Japan. Say, uh, we have gone through a program which has, is here to improve on the productivity of SMEs. So the sensor measure is to pass on this Kaizen philosophy, not only to the SMEs as companies, but also to their personal lives, you know, because the Kaizen philosophy is improving the state, you know, improving your state from where you were to another level. And it's from bottom top and top bottom. So the essential message in, in summary is just to inform, I mean, to encourage uh, all the small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon to, to improve on their way of life and have gain a positive attitude uh, in the way they manage their companies. For most of these enterprises, the practical exercise by the consultants have permitted the management to limit waste, gaining time, space and energy. To design a strategy for BDS delivery. BDS is business development service in Cameroon. And then the MIPMESA, the ministry, is in charge for making the policy and the strategy. And then the SME promotion agency, they implement that the policy and the strategy onto the ground to the actual enterprises. And then to support deliver this BDS by the trained consultant. What exactly is the Kaizen? I don't know what to start, but I think that everybody is concerned by these uh, methods because the workers have seen that they are the actors. So the changes have been seen so quickly. Within one week, we have changed. We have gained seven minutes for the breakfast. So our customers are very happy. The Kaizen project, which is a Japanese concept and philosophy, according to the Secretary General at the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Social Economy and Handicraft, will go operational in other regions of Cameroon. During the closing ceremony, attestations were handed over to consultants, marking the end of the third training session. In more economic news, farmers in the southwest region of Cameroon have been encouraged to practice second generation agriculture. This was during the launch of the agro hop farming season in Boya. Our reporter Regina Leke attended this launch and now reports. Over 50 farmers from some 10 farming groups in the southwest region have received farming equipment to the tune of 5 million francs CFA. The equipment were handed to them by AgriHub, an agricultural entity which provides opportunities for smallholder farmers to create increased income through the production, transformation and marketing of their farm produce. We are working with all of these farmers and um, we are hoping that our agriculture could be transformed. We are hoping that more youths can get into agriculture. 
we are hoping that we can get into the second generation kind of agriculture preached by our head of state, President Pobia. We are expecting them to increase on, on their, their production precisely and their productivity. One thing, because if you don't have good seeds, you won't have good harvest. This was on the occasion of the launching of AgroHub's 2017 farming season, which took place on Thursday, April 13 in Boya. Speaking at the event, the regional delegate for agriculture and rural development, Ekongwe Christopher, felicitated AgroHub for promoting second generation agriculture. He noted that agriculture is one of the main drivers of Cameroon's economy, employing about 68% of Cameroon's national active labor force. Farmers have expressed their joy for the equipment received. So, oh, I'll thank God for the, 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 the things that we have received. And I know, with the grace of God, as we go back, we use it, the things very well. Give me spray machine. Now I go use enough to spray my grass inside my farm cassava. I'll be very, very grateful. I go to use enough to spray with easy my work. AgroHub intervenes in four key areas. The agribusiness helps educate farmers on different ways of transforming and marketing their flagship crop cassava into varied byproducts. It is in line with creating such value chain that this organization in 2016 won the Nestle Creating Shared Value Prize Award in Abidjan. Well, the Cameroonian artist Marie Akangelo is very sick. The artist who sang a historic song for the CPDM party during its launch in 1985 in Bamenda is suffering from cancer and she is pleading that people of good hope should come to her rescue. Our reporter Tabby Claxon spoke to the sick artist. <laughs> Oui, moi j'irai à Kaele, je le verrai à Kaele, car il m'attend à Kaele, quand je serai à Kaele, il m'embrassera à Kaele, à Kaele. Her name is Marie Akangelo, the 66 years old artist is very sick. According to medical reports, she is affected with cancer. For close to a year now, she has been battling with the disease. She even had to go to South Africa for a medical checkup. After three months spent in a hospital in Johannesburg, the artist is back home asking for help. Uh, je dis d'abord merci à Canal 2 de s'être déplacé jusqu'ici chez moi. Merci beaucoup. Quant aux autorités et aux Camerounais, je leur demande, je leur supplie, je les supplie de me venir en aide parce que je suis malade. S'ils peuvent venir me venir en aide, que ce soit financièrement, matériellement. She has also solicited help from the Ministry of Culture the ministries of public health and social affairs, none of these ministries has reacted. Paul Bia, nous te disons, nos camarades du RDPC, en avant pour ta tâche de continuateur, par la volonté de Dieu et la confiance de la nation, jamais, jamais tu ne failliras. Va de l'avant, Paul Bia. Marie Akangelo is alive. It's time for Yaoundé authorities to save the life of a lady who has done much good to the CPT party. Va de l'avant, Paul Bia. Va de l'avant, Paul Bia. Le peuple camerounais te dit, Paul Bia. Va de l'avant, Paul Bia. Va de l'avant, Paul Bia. Nous soutenons ton action de paix et d'unité. Well, we hope the message has gone through. And we now move out of the country where Zimbabwe today celebrates 37 years of independence. In Nigeria, the Abuja International Airport has been reopened six weeks after it was closed for repairs. And for the continent, bad news. France's presidential candidate, Marie Le Pen, wants to suspend all legal immigration to France. This and more put together for you by me. 
Marie Le Pen, one of the frontliners in the French presidential elections and far-right leader, says she would suspend all legal immigration to France. The National Front leader told a rally she wanted to stop what she termed a mad, uncontrolled situation. She added that France would introduce much more drastic, more responsible, more humane and more manageable roles on immigration. Marie Le Pen is neck and neck with Emmanuel Macron ahead of Sunday's first round of voting. As the people of Zimbabwe this April 18th celebrate the country's 37th independence anniversary from white rule, the president, Robert Mugabe, has called on the people to defend the independence they won in 1980. Speaking at the Independence Day celebrations in the capital, Harare, Mr. Mugabe said they will always think of the battles they fought and all they endured from the colonial regime. Ethiopia's Prime Minister has rejected calls by the UN and EU for independence investigation into deaths of hundreds of people during months of anti-government protest. He made it clear that Ethiopia is able to carry out the investigations itself. The government has imposed a state of emergency in response to the protest as the country was hit by an unprecedented wave of demonstrations which began in November 2015. International rights groups have said that hundreds of people lost their lives in incidents where police and protesters clashed. Nigeria's international airport in the capital, Abuja, is now open for business after being closed for six weeks for urgent repairs on the runway. The reopening of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport came as a surprise in a country where deadlines often mean delays. For the airport was reopened a day ahead of schedule. For six weeks, passengers made use of a tiny airport in the northern city of Kaduna. That was what we put together for you tonight as news on Canal Day English. Thanks for watching.